Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to look at the book module more in depth and learn how to modify our layouts, both modifying the pages, the photos that are on them, as well as our captions and our text. So let's get started. First, we should probably start with just reordering pages. It's really, really simple. If you click on the page number, that will highlight the page, and then all you need to do is drag it into the position that you want it to be. You can see that as I drag between these two other pages, I get this yellow line telling me that it's okay to drop that page there and it will reorder. If I select more than one page, for example, if I select page four and five, this double page spread, I can also reorder that. And again, the rest of the pages will simply reflow. In addition, I can reorder individual photos on a page, and that's as simple as dragging and dropping. When I drag and drop, the images will swap, and their captions will swap, of course, as well. And I can also move pages or swap images between pages by simply dragging and dropping onto another page. You can see that those images swapped. If I want to add a new image as opposed to swapping images, then I would select from my film strip and drag and drop into that page. Now, let's talk a little bit about the front cover because right now I have it set up for a dust jacket and I don't want that. So I'm going to go to my book settings and change my cover to a simple hardcover image wrap. And you can see that the template has changed. If I want to modify the template further and choose a different one, I simply click on the disclosure triangle and then we can scroll down until I find the page that I want and select it. Now, these images aren't really at the correct aspect ratio, or not at least at the aspect ratio that I want. What I'd prefer is to have this photo fill that entire cell. And when I say cell, when I click on the photo, this yellow line you can see tells me that that spread is selected. In fact, let's zoom in a little bit by using Command R. And I want to show you over here my guides, because I can turn on and off my guides for my page bleed, that's going to be this gray area, this outer area here. My text safe areas, that's the area that I need to put my text inside of just to be certain that it won't get cropped. I've got my guides for my photo cells. So let's say, for example, I select this image and delete it. You can see my photo cell is this huge gray area, so I can toggle that on and off. Let's go ahead and drag and drop that image back in there. And then we can also see the filler text, which we would see on a different page. But I can turn all of these on and off at one time by simply choosing Show Guides. And if I go here underneath View, you'll notice that Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G toggles on and off the guides, or each one of the individual guides can be toggled on and off using these keyboard shortcuts. All right, now what I want to do is I actually want to fill the whole photo cell with this image. The easiest way to do that is to right mouse click and simply select Zoom Photo to Fit Cell. Now that it's zoomed, I can click and drag to reposition that image within that cell. This area right here is my text area, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Over here, when I hover on top of this image, you can see it's also not filling the cell. So I can right mouse click and choose Zoom Photo to Fit Cell. I can reposition it, and I can also zoom it additional amounts by simply clicking on the Zoom slider here, and then repositioning it the way I want it. Excellent, let's view all of our pages again by using Command or Control E. Now I just want to restate what I mentioned in the first video here, is that all the changes that I've made are automatically being saved because I've already saved this book and you can see it right over here in my collection. So if I did want to experiment and go maybe in a totally different direction, yet still be able to come back to this state, what I would want to do is I would want to duplicate the book. And now in Lightroom 4, you can duplicate any of your collections, you can duplicate any of your projects by simply holding down the Option key or the Alt key and then dragging that collection, or in this case the book project, up here to the collection set. When I drag and drop it, you can see now that it's created a second copy. So you can see there's a lot of flexibility. All right, if I don't want this, I simply right mouse click and we can delete 
that book. We'll go ahead and delete it and go back to our other book. One of the other things that you might have noticed is down here in the film strip, all of the images that I've used in the book have a number one on top of them. Let's scroll down to the bottom here and let's say that I want to delete all of these pages. All I need to do is select them and then right mouse click and I can remove all of those pages. Then you'll notice down here in the film strip, because the images aren't being used in this book, they no longer have the little one on top of them. So it's a really easy way to see which images you've used and which images you haven't. All right, let's talk about modifying the layout a little bit more. I'm gonna use this double page spread here. So let's select one of the pages and use Command or Control R in order to zoom in. What I'd like to do is I'd like to put four images on this left-hand side page. So I'm gonna use the disclosure triangle right here, switch over to my four photos templates, and then scroll down until I see the template that I want. I actually want them all to have the bleed, so I'll select this template. You can see my empty cells are added below, so now I can drag and drop my other images into position. I'm not really sure this is the order that I want them in, so I'll go ahead and swap those two and also swap these two. I just like the way that she's looking down and he's looking up. But I would also like all four of these to fill their cells. So I'm gonna hold down the Command key and simply click to select all of them, right mouse click, and then zoom the photos to fit the cell. Now when I click away from the page, you can see there's two problems. The first problem is that each one of these has a caption, and I'd like to get rid of those. And the other problem is I don't like the way that they actually butt up to each other. I'd like to put a little gutter in between them. So let's solve the first one. I could go and click on each of the captions, but what I'd like to do is just simply have a keyboard shortcut to select all the captions on a page. In order to do that, I'll double click the page because I don't want to select the captions on the right side page. And then I'll use the shortcut under the Edit menu to select all text cells. And you'll notice there's another shortcut that I could have used to select all my photo cells as well. So those are great keyboard shortcuts to know. We'll select all the text cells. And then I'll go over here to the caption and turn off the photo captions so there are no more captions on top of these images. Now what I need to do is I need to change the padding for these images. So I'll select the first image and go to the cell area. Now, I don't wanna change the padding for all four attributes, left, right, top, and bottom, so I'm going to unlink them all. And in this case, I just wanna add five points to the right-hand side, and then also five points to the bottom. You can see if I click off there, I now have a little gutter. I'll go to the next image right here, I'll unlink them all, and then I need to add five points to the left, and then five points to the bottom. Again, we'll move to the next image, unlink them all. In this case, I need to add five points to the top and then five points to the right-hand side. And here as our last image, we unlink it, we add to the top five points and also to the left five points. Excellent, so now we have this nice gutter running between them. You might be thinking, why didn't I just add five to all four sides? It's because I actually want there to be a bleed on the top here and the, the outsides. I just wanted the gutter in the middle. Now I don't really like where the images are falling, so I can quickly just click and drag in order to reposition them. And again, I could use the zoom if I wanna zoom in on any one particular photo. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. I wanna see the double page spread, so Command or Control R will allow me to do that. Now, on the right-hand side, there's a variety of different ways that I can change this. I think the easiest way would be to simply select the image that I wanna add. In this case, it's the image of the mask, and I'll drag and drop it from my film strip into the cell. You'll notice that I dragged and dropped it to the cell on the left-hand side, because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my page template from the two photos to one photo, and I'll do a full bleed here so that I can go in and zoom this photo to fit the cell, and then reposition it. Now I might wanna change the order because the mask is looking down and to the right, so I'll view all of my pages, and then simply drag in order to reorder that. Now let's scroll down a little bit further, maybe to page 11, and select that. 
what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a new blank page. So, so far we've been using this disclosure triangle in order to modify our pages, but we can also do that in the page panel. In addition to modifying your page layout here, you can also add just a page or add a blank page. I'll go ahead and add a page to show you what that does. It will add a page with whatever template is selected based on what I had selected before, which was page 11. If I didn't have any pages selected and I added a page, it would add a page at the end of my book, and that's not necessarily what I want. What I do want is to add a double page spread, but I don't need to add the second page. What I can do instead is on page 12, I'll simply modify my template to a two-page spread, and then I can select any of these different options. Let's choose this one, and when I choose the double page spread, you'll notice that it automatically added a new page 13 and bumped what was 13 to 14, so it's reflowing automatically. Now we can choose the image that we want to add and simply drag and drop it into that cell. Right mouse click, zoom the photo to fit the cell, and then I can reposition it as needed. I'm going to go ahead and add a blank page after this to show you that it's going to add just a single page. If I had used the Add Page option, it would have added another double page spread, which would have been fine because in this case I do want to actually add another blank page, but I didn't want them to be double page spreads. I wanted a separate photo on each page. Now I can simply drag and drop both of those images in, select them both, right mouse click, zoom the photos to fill, select the image on the left and reposition it, and select the image on the right. So you can see it's really, really easy to modify your pages, to add pages, you can delete pages, very, very simple. So you can make the book really your own. Now, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to sit here and walk through every single different option that there is, is I'm going to switch books. So I've already got this other book created that's a little bit more complicated. So let's go look at that. I'll just click on it, and that will automatically load the book. But you can see there's a lot of similar pages here. We've got the double page spread. I have three vertical images here that I've cropped pretty tightly. And then over on the right-hand side, I've got just another template that displays three images a little bit differently. And then I've got another double page spread where I've got one image overlapping another. Let's look at this for one second because I do just want to point out this edge right here was actually created in the develop module by using a vignette. If I use my arrow keys or click down here to move to the next spread, this edge is actually part of a template. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but some of these templates, especially like the creative templates, there are a variety of different edges that you can add. And by the way, I'll just mention these up here, the one photo, two photo, three photos, and four photos, all of the templates that are up here are kind of repeated with different groupings down here. So they're not all different templates, it's just that we've grouped some of the ones that we think you might be using if you're doing a travel book or a wedding book. We've grouped those together. So there's some repeats of the templates, but we've grouped them to help people with their book creations. All right. Let's zoom back out again. I just wanted to show you this one other one right here where we've got multiple images. I've actually used the same image multiple times. Um, I've seen people do this and zoom a little bit different on each image, which can give a great effect as well. But let's go ahead and scroll up for a moment and take a look at some of our captions. So I'm going to go to page 11 for a minute because you'll notice that the, each one of these images has a caption, and it's actually the same caption. So I really don't need to repeat the caption, plus I'm not really sure I like where the captions are. So I'll go to my caption panel, we'll select both of these photos, and I'm going to turn off the photo caption and turn on the page caption. So now I can enter in my own caption here, and maybe that would just be, um, Nets of Venice. Now, there's a very important difference between this caption, which I just entered in manually, and the caption that came from the metadata from the image, right? The caption that said Nets, if we go back to the library module and we look at these two images, they have the caption Net. So this caption is part of the EXIF data of that file. So when I go over to the book module and I told the book module to automatically add the captions, it added it from that metadata. However, what I just added is not part of the metadata. So it's kind of important if you override a caption, 
a photo caption, or if you add a page caption, those are specific to this book. They're not specific to the photo itself. So just an important safety tip there because I don't want you to spend a bunch of time maybe adding captions in the book module and then go to the slideshow module because the slideshow module wouldn't show you those captions. If you want to use the same captions for multiple projects, you want to enter those captions in the metadata of the file back in the library module. Now at first glance, it might look like these captions are sort of restrictive in that like, it looks like there's just a very narrow box, but you should know that if you add a really long caption, that box will grow. And just like we made changes to the cell padding of the photos, you can make changes to the cell padding of your image. In fact, let's go and look at our cover page for a minute because I want to add a title to the title of my book. So I'll click in there and I'll type in Venice, Italy, and then underneath that, photography by Julianne Cost. Now, I would like to make some changes to this. So just like any other application in the, the Adobe Suite, you need to select the text that you want to affect. So I want to change the title here and make it bold. So I'll go to my type panel. You can see there are a ton of different options here. We can change the font family and we can change the font. We can also change the size here. So I'll go ahead and make that a little bit larger. I also want to change this to a bold font there. It also looks to me like the tracking's a little high. There's a little bit too much space between each one of the characters, so I'll go ahead and lower that. If I wanted to just change the spacing between two characters, then I could change the kerning. You see when I just have my text insertion point there, then the kerning option becomes active. And then I'll select the photography by Julianne Cost, and we'll go ahead and just decrease the size there, and maybe also the tracking a bit. And then I want that a little bit tighter with the text on top, so we'll select all the text, and now I can change my letting to just pull that up underneath there a little bit more. So as you can see, there's a ton of flexibility here. This type is all re-editable, so if later I want to come in and add a comma there, and then I realize that, oh, this text doesn't work anymore, I need a little bit more tracking, we can make those changes too. In fact, one thing I forgot to mention is we can also change not only the character color, but we can also change the opacity. So if we wanted this to be semi-opaque, we could do that as well. Now, if you're going to spend a lot of time and change all of these settings, and maybe it's not as applicable here as it would be in the captions, but you can save any of these settings as a type preset. So, for example, in the very first movie here, when we automated bringing in all my captions, I used a preset here, this myriad regular nine point. So you can make whatever presets you want, simply save them as new presets, and those presets become accessible then, and you can use them whenever you're in any of your books that you're creating. All right, let's zoom back out here and scroll down to the bottom. I just want to quickly show you two more things, and that is down here on page 25, we'll zoom in, and I'm going to select this text, and I'm going to change it from one to two column. Now, this took me a minute to figure out, so I just want to show you, well, one, it's justified text, right? So you can justify your text, you can left align or right align, whatever you like, but what I couldn't figure out was, how do I get this even, right? Because right now it's very lopsided. There's so much more text on the left and not the right. And so I counted down and thought, well, maybe I need to you know, hit a hard return here. But it's actually much easier. Remember, if we go to the cell area and we unlink this, we can change the padding at the bottom of this. And by just scooting that up, you can see now I can balance out my text. So that's kind of a nice little trick. And then one last thing, again, I will zoom back out and we'll go to this page right here and zoom on in. So there is a targeted type tool right here. Just like you're probably familiar with the targeted adjustment tool in the develop module, here I can pick this up and then depending on how I click and drag, we can change many of the text attributes. So I'll select the targeted 
Type tool. Now, I do need to select all of my types, so I just use Command A or Control A on Windows. I have my targeted adjustment tool, and depending on how I click and drag, I will change different attributes of the type. So if I click and drag left to right, you can see that I'm changing the size of my type. If I let go and then click again and drag up or down, you can see that I'm changing the letting of my type. And if I add the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and I drag left to right, you can see that I'm changing the tracking of my type. And if I use that same Command or Control key and I drag up and down, you can see that I'm changing the baseline shift. So those are kind of some neat shortcuts that you can use to quickly modify the text, especially when you're working with a large block of text. Excellent. That wraps up how to modify your book layouts as far as your photos as well as your type. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.